The last two issues we've talked about in terms of making decisions and forming judgments have been heuristics, uh, the representativeness heuristic and the availability heuristic. Um, both of these shortcuts did lead to us making errors in our judgment. Uh, this presentation is going to be about overconfidence. Uh, this is when our error in judgment is an error in assessing our own ability to judge things. So overconfidence is defined as the tendency to be more confident than correct to overestimate the accuracy of our beliefs and judgments. Um, in plain English, it just means that we can believe very, very strongly in something even when we're wrong. Uh, so a couple of examples of this. Uh, first, there have been uh, research researchers that have looked into spelling tasks. Uh, they've asked people to spell possibly novel words, and then they've asked them to estimate their confidence that they spelled the words correctly. Um, what you find in these spelling tasks is about a 20% um, overconfidence level, meaning they were correct 80% of the time, but they were 100% confident that they were going to be correct. Uh, so even though 20% of the time they were wrong in their spelling, they still were 100% convinced they were going to be right. Uh, another example, estimates of rate of work. Uh, so what this means is uh, a lot of times people tend to underestimate the amount of time it's going to take them to finish something. So you get assigned a project, uh, for example, in AP Psychology. So you're told by the end of a vacation you need to have 64 pictures um, put together and captioned uh, and ready to be handed in midnight Sunday end of vacation. Uh, people tend to be overconfident in their judgments of how long it will take them. So they think, well, I can delay, I can start it at the, you know, maybe Friday evening, I'll be done by Sunday. Sunday afternoon, it'll be fine. Uh, what they find time and time and time again is that people are very, very wrong about how long it's going to take them to do something. Continually, it takes them longer than they estimate, um, but still they continue to make the same mistake. Um, other experiments have looked at general knowledge. Uh, people have been asked uh, questions, either true and false questions, or, um, you know, I think your textbook talks about a question like, is absinthe a precious stone or a uh, liquor? And people tend to be overly confident in how correct they are, even though they're only correct maybe 60% of the time, they're 80, 85, 90% certain that their answer is right. Last example I have about overconfidence, uh, and one of my favorite, is the idea of overplacement. Um, people tend to believe that they are better than average, and they're very confident that they're better than average. And I think the best example of this is the statistic that 93% of American drivers think that they are better than the median. Um, so. The majority of drivers, uh, way more than the majority of drivers here in the United States, think that they are better than the median driver. Um, obviously, statistics say that's absolutely impossible, but we have this overconfidence um, in our abilities and in the idea that we're correct, uh, and so we all think we're better than average when statistically and logically that cannot possibly be true. So recap, definition, you can see it here, basically, we are more oftentimes uh, going to be really confident that we are right, but unfortunately, a lot of times we are not correct. So even if you feel 100% confident about something, uh, maybe check yourself a little bit and accept the fact that you might actually be wrong in a certain situation. Because I think that we have seen this can have very real consequences. Uh, when we were in the memory chapter, for example, and we went over eyewitness testimony, um, every single time those eyewitnesses were 100% confident that they were being correct and saying, yes, that's the person who robbed the convenience store. But as we see, um, a lot of times they were wrong. So it's very important for you to recognize the overconfidence effect and then use that when you're making your own decisions and your own judgments.